Hey everybody, it's 8.30, actually 8.31, I, my apologies. I was making myself a cocktail. I ran out of Fernandez's sangria. So I had to make myself a drink. Back to the Moscow Mules. So welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. We have been meeting every night at 8.30 for the last 77 nights here on the Mistress Carrie Facebook page. I can't believe it's been 77 nights in a row. So cheers to you guys and your longevity. Hey, Jen. My college roommate, poor girl. I put her through hell for two years. And she still loves me. It's fucking amazing. What's up, Becky? Hey, Amy. Hey, David. Hi, Annie Jean. What's up, Jessica? Hey, Hillary. Sean says the dropkicks are still playing. Oh, I know. Trust me. I don't want to compete with the Dropkick Murphys for internet ratings tonight, but I don't have a choice. Um, but I watched them for a while, and uh, I watched the whole lead-up part of the video and them getting um, introduced at Fenway and, uh, you know, putting their jerseys on. And um, they sound great. It's so weird to see them so spread apart and playing in an empty Fenway. Really bizarre. And it actually made me think about... Um, when the Dropkick Murphys played at Fenway in 2011. They played two shows, and it was in September, and I was in Afghanistan, and they let me and a bunch of soldiers from Massachusetts um, introduce them on the Jumbotron. And we put those videos up, and they are still up on YouTube, and I posted uh, one of them up on my Facebook page, but I sent out both links on my Twitter feed, at Mistress Carrie on Twitter, so if you never saw those, if you um, weren't at those Fenway shows, you might see um, a soldier that uh, you recognize because a bunch of the guys that I was embedded with helped me make those videos and introduce the guys. And um, they're up on YouTube and you guys can check them out. And uh, I just thought it was awesome and so generous that the Dropkick Murphys let us do that. And it was really funny. We probably should have released the video outtakes of us trying to get all of the soldiers to say all of the stuff that they needed to say in unison. And um, it, it was just really cool. And it's one of those memories that when I look back at those trips overseas, um, I just look back at those moments. And poor producer Mike had to try and videotape that stuff. And he kept, uh, you know, laughing when we fucked up, which was really funny. So if you're not watching the drop kicks, thank you. If you're watching the drop kicks and me at the same time, if you're sitting with somebody, you can watch me and then listen to the drop kicks. We have the technology. It's a good reason to get married. Then you get two cell phones in the house or on the laptop or the iPad and then the phone. I don't mind sharing your attention span with the drop kick Murphys. That's fine. Okay. So I want to give you guys a t-shirt update. Um, this morning I made my final trip to the post office with the first batch of t-shirts. And so the entire first mailing of t-shirts is now in the mail. And if you didn't get yours yet, give it another day, maybe two, depending on how long it needs to travel. Uh, I believe we're up to 25 states that are now represented in the war room, um, at least by t-shirt sales. Uh, we got shirts going to Hawaii, North Dakota, Kansas, um, Utah, Ohio, New York, California, Oregon, uh, all of the New England states, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia. There's a ton. Texas. Um, and it's been actually very cool going through the mailing labels and trying to figure out um, how it is that you ended up wherever it is that you are outside of New England and how you heard about me. Whether you're a transplanted mass hole, uh, whether you went to college here in New England and then took me home with you, or whether you're somebody that just likes rock and roll and is really into purple haired bitches. Uh, with a Boston attitude and you stumbled upon me on the internet and now I've sucked you into this crazy club that we've got going on. But whatever the reason, what whatever your excuse is for ending up here in the war room and hanging out with all of us, I am totally into it. The drop kicks just ended. 
Oh, yeah, now I know because Annie Ange just signed on. Annie Ange texted me a little while ago with a picture of her wearing my cocktails in the war room shirt and drinking Fernandez's sangria. And then she said I might be late getting into the war room because the dropkicks are kicking ass at Fenway. So um, now that the Dropkick Murphys are over, congratulations to those guys. The streaming numbers on that show had to be insane. When it started, there were like 65,000 people just watching it on YouTube, never mind all of the other outlets, and the audience just kept building. Um, so anyway, so I want to let you know that I got up first thing this morning, visited my great friends at the post office this morning, and so all of the shirts that got um, purchased in the initial weekend that they went on sale are now in the mail, and you should be getting them. And hold on. I want to tell you guys that I am loving your pictures. I have had so many people tweet um, pictures when they got the t-shirts and then posing with all the stuff, um, tagging me on Instagram or commenting and saying, hey, check out my Instagram for the pictures. And it's just been so cool to see the shirts that were stacked up in my dining room. Um, now in your guys' house and with you guys wearing them and taking pictures. So keep the pictures coming because I am absolutely loving them. I just, I apologize if there's rogue pug fur on them. I tried to keep Wednesday away from them the best I could. Um, but I just love seeing you guys in the shirts. And uh, 14,000 when I was watching Michael says, yeah, I mean, it, the, the drop kicks were killing it tonight. So can you buy a bottle of limoncello at the Packy? Ed wants to know. Hell yeah, you can. There's all kinds of different kinds of limoncello. There's orange cello. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. So, um, but, uh, so yes, you can buy limoncello, um, or find an old Italian man that makes it in the basement. Either way. To everybody just joining us, you don't have to apologize. We know you were watching the Dropkick Murphys. It's totally fine. I can't compete with an empty Fenway concert. I totally get it. So, um, you know, they, I thought they did a great job. It's just so weird to see them playing in an empty park. It's just so bizarre. What's up, Nelly? Um, but congratulations to those guys because uh, this is now the second concert that they've done um, streaming. Of course, the first one they did over St. Patrick's Day and then this one. And uh, it's pretty badass. So as a reminder, speaking of the t-shirts that you guys all look so amazing in and all of the photos you keep sending me, um, the t-shirts are only available until Sunday night and then they're not going to be available anymore in this incarnation. Um, eventually I will make cocktails in the war room t-shirts available again, but they will have a different back. Um, that's how we're going to know what the OG, um, shirts are because, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, we can identify the people that were there during the pandemic, baby. So you've got until Sunday night to purchase your shirts. And of course, I'll warn you in the war room on Sunday night, and that'll give you a few hours notice before I pull the link down. I will tell you that I spent some significant time today printing labels and counting, and we are just under 650 shirts, which I can't fucking believe. So I know T-Shirt Brian is watching. So Brian, prepare yourself, because Monday morning there's going to be another giant T-Shirt order in your email. Um, but you guys are awesome. And, uh, you know, the post office was loving it. They're like, you can come back anytime you want. Are you kidding? Um, so I'm super psyched. And everybody that's involved with the t-shirts is just so happy that you guys love them so much. I talked to Christine from Latini Creative Solutions earlier this afternoon who designed them. And she was just so happy that you guys have been so complimentary with not only her design for the cocktails in the war room artwork, but also for the artwork for my new podcast, which is up now. And um, episode one is coming. I worked a lot on trying to secure said interviews for said podcast today. I was very busy, um, but Christine just thinks it's awesome that you guys have been so nice and complimentary for her hard work. I just think she is so talented and she has done such a great job in really kind of capturing everything. Brian, T-shirt Brian says, bring it on. So 
Round two, baby. Um, Brian, you know, you guys will see when you get your t-shirts, if you haven't already, the quality of these t-shirts is great. They are pre-shrunk and they are going to hold up. You'll probably dissolve the cotton before the logo cracks, peels, or fades. So wear them with pride, wear them often, wash them please, but otherwise. Um... Oh, Fernandez, you like that video? Yeah, there's another one there too from the uh, Bell Hassar guys, best by far. Um, it's all right, Brenda. You and everybody else was watching the drop kicks. It's all good. We forgive you. So you got till Sunday night to order your t-shirts. And then, um, as I explained last night, I'll go over all of the announcements once again, in case you missed early last night. This coming Tuesday is going to be the final, um, nightly cocktails in the war room. We discussed it last night at length, um, for a couple of reasons. One, I... I'm really starting to focus on the podcast and a lot of the other things going on. Um, but the reason why I picked Tuesday is that, uh, yes, I have been a very buzzy little bee, Tom, um, is that I am taking a few days off and I'm going to be doing some traveling and finally able to go and visit my boyfriend who I have not seen in over three months. Um, and I would really like to see him. I've been through a lot in the last three months and I have not seen him. So um, that was as good an excuse as any to transition the Cocktails in the War Room nightly show into Cocktails in the War Room, the weekly show, because it's not going away. I told you I'm not giving up on this at all. Um, and it's going to become a weekly show with better production. My friend Dave, who was supposed to be helping me with all of the production for the War Room and getting the better camera angles and all of that, his grandmother is the famous 103-year-old Jenny that kicked COVID-19's ass and then chugged a Bud Light in the video on the internet. And now, like, he's literally managing her interview career right now and doing all of this press with her. And there are now celebrities that are tweeting at her, offering to buy her Bud Lights when they tour through Massachusetts again. And so Dave has been totally sidetracked in all of his own life because he is managing his famous 103 year old coronavirus survivor grandmother who likes to chug Bud Lights like it's her job. So Dave is still, um, Dave is still going to help with the production value of the show. So when I get back from my little mini vacation, Cocktails in the War Room will return as a weekly show that will enable me to have guests in person and um, bringing them in on the internet. So I'll be able to bring in a lot of artists and there'll be band members that are gonna hang out with us. Even if they can't be here, they are going to be in a format like this. Um, so the changes that I can kind of tell you, cause I, I have an idea of what's going on, is that right now my phone is like this the camera will then make it like this, so you'll be able to watch cocktails in the war room on your smart TVs or on your big computer monitors, and it's gonna look better. There'll be a split screen that'll have me and then the guest, if they're coming in through the internet, and all of your comments and all of that are all still gonna be, it's all gonna be live, it's all gonna be interactive, so that you guys, whoever the guest is in the war room that week, um, you guys will be able to ask them questions and they'll be able to respond to your comments. And if I don't have a guest that week, then we're going to do what we're doing right now and kind of talk about the headlines and talk about what's going on in music. And I'll also be able to tip you off on what's going on in that week's uh, podcast episode and be able to fill you in on music headlines and kind of all of the other things. So um, this coming Tuesday, to commemorate the final nightly cocktails in the war room, I am uh, going to have my first co-host besides Wednesday and Mike Shu is going to be joining me on the couch here in the war room uh, in person. And he is going to be here to talk to you guys and get drunk with me, which is going to be great. So make sure that you are setting an alert. Don't miss the war room on Tuesday night because Mike Shoe is going to be here. And I couldn't be happier. Madeline says, shirts are so comfortable. Love it so much. And they're only going to get more comfortable. You know how new shirts are. You got to wash them a couple times and then they soften up and they're going to be great. Um, Amanda loves her shirt and loves the goodies. I did put little surprises in each envelope for you guys. Um, 
I wanted to make sure that you guys, you know, all got little mementos of the history of WAF and I had a stash, so I wanted to share those with you. Um, speaking of AAF, Stiz came and visited me today. I put a picture up on my Instagram and it's up on Twitter and up on this Facebook page. He wanted to come and pick up his Cocktails in the War Room t-shirt um, in person and I made him a homemade meatball grinder and we hung out for a while and he played with Wednesday and then I had to make sure he didn't try to steal her because he really has a crush on her and I think would have taken her if I turned my back. Um, I would have let him stay for the war room, but I really wanted Mike Shu to be the first guest. And we tried with the guys from San Antonio, but technically I didn't have the technology uh, ready to go. So I really wanted Mike Shu to have the honor of being the first guest in the war room. And so Mike Shu was going to be here on Tuesday. But after that, Stiz can come back and he can hang out on the couch and play with Wednesday and hang out in the war room and talk to you guys as well. So uh, Brenda, this is a good question because a lot of people are asking. Brenda said, okay, I missed it. When is the second batch going to be done? So here's the deal. Here's the timeline for the second batch of t-shirts, which started last Monday and goes through this Sunday. Brian is getting the t-shirt order on Monday. We're doing our last cocktails in the war room the next night, Tuesday night. Then I'm taking off for a few days. When I get back, um, Brian, because he works so damn fast, will have the t-shirts done and I'm going to pick them up as soon as I get home. And then as soon as I get them, the envelopes and the labels, we've already done all of that work. I had my aunt and my mom stuffing envelopes and all of the labels are taken care of. Most of the inventory is already done, so I just have to worry about whatever t-shirts get um, ordered this weekend. And then it's not gonna take us long at all um, to get all of those envelopes stuffed. And so once I get the t-shirts from Brian, it's gonna be only a few days before you guys have them. Um, the post office is incredibly fast. Um, what takes the longest is just waiting in the line because it seems like everyone is either running an e-commerce business out of their house, um, or they're trying to mail something and can't remember the zip code of where they're trying to send it. Or I told you guys last night, like there's some weird, strange things are afoot at the Circle K and they're also afoot at the post office. So um, I am going to do my best to have those t-shirts to you guys um, within like 10 to 12 days, you know, and, and it would be faster except I'm going out of town. And how do you order them? Patricia. Click the profile picture of this Facebook page. You'll see that it is the Cocktails in the War Room artwork. Click that and then all of the description of the t-shirts, who made them, who designed them, who printed them, um, the organization where all the profits are going, it's all there. And then there is a link for each size that you wanna order. Click the link of whatever size you want to order. Go through it. You can either pay through PayPal or with your credit card. If you want to order more than one, you just have to two, do two different transactions or three different uh, transactions because um, um, that was the cleanest, fastest, and easiest way for me to sell these things without having a website and with nobody being able to come over and set it up and do all of the stuff. It's being built right now, but in the middle of a global pandemic, I think it worked out just fine and doing it through PayPal made it easy. Um, Tom wants to know who is taking care of my house while I'm gone. Uh, oh, who's going to host when I leave? Uh, when I'm on vacation, there's not going to be anybody here. You guys are going to get a few nights off away from me. And then when I get back, we are going to have cocktails in the war room, um, the weekly edition, and hopefully the production value will be up and it's going to look better and it's going to sound better and I'll be able to put graphics up and it's going to be really cool, but it's all still going to be the same show. It's still going to be here in the war room. It's still going to be me running everything and you know it's just um, going to give me an opportunity to be able to invite people that you guys want to talk to into the war room with us not only in person but if they can't be here you know eventually the bands are going to go back out on the road and so it's going to be difficult to just have them swing by the house I'm not against that um, but um, to be able to bring them in digitally and be able to see all the comments and all of that stuff is going to be great Everybody wants to know who's going to be babysitting Wednesday. Trust me, I have plenty of family that wants to babysit that nugget, and she's going to be just fine. 
Um, Madeline, good question. I am going to attempt to stick to a Tuesday night schedule. However, I reserve the right as the war room is under my domain and control and authority um, that I'm going to pull rank anytime I need to move the war room, if there's something going on, or add extra nights in the war room if, if the, the world calls for it. Like, say, for example, if an artist wants to come in the war room but they're not available that Tuesday, well, then we're having an extra cocktails in the war room that week. Um, so, you know, the best thing to do, and here's one of the cool things about this technology that I'm getting together for the war room, is that I will be able to set up watch parties and events on my Facebook page. So if I was gonna schedule an extra night or whatever, that you guys will get an alert with a link and it's gonna have graphics and I'll be able to tell you who the guests are gonna be. It's gonna be like a real fucking show. Like, professional and everything. Um, so you guys will know. And obviously, if you are, um, um, if you're following my social media pages, whether it be Twitter or Instagram, obviously you'll know then too. But here's the other thing, is that there are a lot of people that complain that I don't do the war room on YouTube because they don't have Facebook. And so I'll be able to take the videos of cocktails in the war room and be able to propagate them to my YouTube channel as well. So we'll be able to invite a whole bunch of new people um, from YouTube into the war room, which I'm really excited about. So can we, can we still mail you and Wednesday gifts? Of course, if you want to, you don't have to, but the post office box isn't going anywhere and the war room's not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Um, but it's just going to be, um, you know, different. Obviously we knew the world was going to change once, you know, things started opening up because of the virus, but I really want to be able to keep the war room going. I love how interactive it is. Um, I love that you guys love it so much. I love that we've become this community. Uh, I love that we could bring people in here and they can answer your questions. It's kind of like the WAF text line. Um, that we used to have in the studio, except you guys can see me at the same time. But I also just love, you know, I, I love hanging out in the war room anyway. So the fact that you guys love it now too is just a bonus. Um, but I also have the podcast and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, one of the things that I did a lot of at WAF was I got asked to host a lot of events. And sometimes I could do them and sometimes I couldn't, depending on what my schedule was like. And so now that I'm going to be hosting the podcast... Um, I'll be able to do, you know, event hosting and be able to get out and, you know, go to shows and do interviews and, um, you know, really be able to get out more and to be able to spend more time with you guys, whether they be at charity events or, you know, bar nights. Um, obviously once the shows get up and running and we have, um, sponsors that are included in all of it, um, then you know, there's going to be places to incorporate the sponsors, which I'm really going to need, um, obviously, since I don't have a radio job anymore. Um, is it still going to be an hour show? I can't promise you it won't go later. Like, I can't promise you that Mike Shue and I are going to be done in an hour on Tuesday. It could be an hour and a half. It could be two hours. Uh, Zachary says, I want to come over and visit sometime. Uh, I'm not inviting people into the war room for real, okay? Like... We don't want to start scaring me when people start showing up unexpectedly because they want to have a cocktail in the war room. Let's not get weird. That's how people get in trouble. That's how the cops get called. Or you got to deal with me on a bad day. But um, there's just... it. We're going to be able to do a lot of really cool stuff together. So uh, I'm super excited about everything that's going on. Um... I have been spending so much time on the phone just kind of working through things. There's so many things that I didn't know I was going to have to deal with because the radio station, you know, we had departments for that. Like, you know, we had people that went out and sold the commercials and we had people that dealt with all of the legal stuff and we had people that dealt with the money coming in for the commercials and we had a marketing department to make t-shirts and you know, ways to distribute those t-shirts. And we just had all these departments and now it's all me. It's like, I feel like I'm running a mini WAF and I'm the only fucking staff member. We had engineers when something broke. Now I have to know how everything works. 
I used to be able to say I'm just a stupid DJ and now I can't say that anytime anymore because I have to actually know stuff. <laughs> I don't want to have to know stuff. Um, Ricky says start a GoFundMe. Actually, Ricky, I'm probably uh, later on in the year going to launch um, a Cameo account and probably also a Patreon account. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity um, to get involved with the show in those ways as well. So there's a lot... There's a lot. You guys are going to be so fucking sick of me that you're just going to be like, Carrie, I need to get the fuck away from you. Seriously. I'm, I'm with you too much. Although you used to spend five hours a day with me on the radio, so maybe you won't. I don't know. But um, Nancy says, seriously, though, is that Wednesday's basket of toys? Yeah. So I brought it in so you guys could see. So this is the amazing basket that we got in the post office box, and it was specifically to hold all of her toys, and it's fucking full. And these are all her toys, toys that she had, toys that you guys have sent her. It's not even all of them because she hides them in places. Like there's toys, there's tennis balls everywhere around my house. They're underneath every couch, underneath any furniture she could cram them under. But, so of course, this is her favorite. This is her most favorite um, thing. This is like her pacifier. Like if something happened to this toy, she would be devastated because when she is tired at the end of the day and wants comfort, it's like her her favorite blanket if she were like a baby like she puts this in her mouth and she sleeps with it on her chin and it's gross and she loves it and I'm not taking it away from her it's actually it's called the ball and it's a mini love sack so the love sack that I got downstairs went remember when love sack years ago put the love sacks in the AF studio they gave the DJs love sacks too and um, so I have a black love sack that's fuzzy like this. And then they had these balls that are like mini love sacks and they, they used to give them to you as like little like things or whatever. And I just had it. I never got rid of it. It was just around. And then when I got Wednesday, she grabbed it and has not, it's a whoopee. Exactly. Like she has not let it go. So this is her favorite. It doesn't squeak. It doesn't do any tricks. It doesn't have anything in it's crinkly. It's just this puffy ball and she fucking loves it. But let's see if we can get her in here. <laughs> Wednesday. So she's tired. She ran around the yard a lot today with Stiz because Stiz loves her. And she loves Stiz. Wednesday. Hey. I think she's sleeping. Wednesday. I'll get her in here. But yeah. This is, seriously, I wanted you guys to see. And the thing is, so now she sees our toys in here, right? Oh, everything's backwards. Okay, so she, she's, she sees her toys in here. And she'll sit there and whimper for a minute if she sees something that she wants, if I don't get up and get it for her. So then she'll get up on her hind legs and she'll start moving stuff around. And then last night she jumped up in here and started digging around and then found what she wanted and jumped back out and ran and played with it. It's insane. Like she's a child, like an, a, a human child. Um, but she's got like Wonder Woman. Oh my God. She has a brain. It squeaks. Oh, I think the brain got her. Here she comes. What's mommy doing? Do I got all your basket of toys? Do you want to come up and play? Come on. What do you want, the big blue dog? <laughs> there she is. Were you sleepy? Oh, you got a leaf on your blue dog. She's got the hiccups. Can you see? She's gotten the hiccups since she literally was a two-week-old, no, a three-week-old puppy when I met her. She's always, she always gets the hiccups. It's so funny. What are you doing, baby girl? Come here. Come here and say hi to everybody. Come here. Oh, I know. It's so hard being adorable. I know. It's so hard being adorable, isn't it? I know it is. What's going on? That's a very big yawn and a very big mouth you have. Thank you for not licking my teeth. You want to say hi to everyone? I just showed them all of your toys. 
You have a lot. I can't wait for Mike Shue to be in here with Wednesday on Tuesday. Right? You're sitting on my arm now. She's just chilling. Is this where you want to sit? Hmm? You're my girl. Yeah. You're my girl. Are you a sleepy dog? Are you a sleepy dog? All right, come here. Let me rub your belly. This is it. Here we go. She's my nugget. Sometimes we call her the midget because she was so tiny for so long that she was like a midget dog, like just too tiny. She was just too tiny, huh? I feel bad, I'm sorry that I'm just sitting here snuggling my dog, making you guys watch it. Right, are you hot? Why are you so mellow, are you sweaty? Because mommy hasn't turned the air conditioning on? Because she doesn't want to pay the electric bill? Huh? It's too early to turn the AC on. It's like, you know how you wait until like the last possible moment in the fall to turn the heat on? Because you're like, I don't want to do it yet. Well, I'm having a standoff with the fucking air conditioning. And this humidity is not making it easy. Did I get what you sent me? Um, Monica, what did you, did you send me the Wonder Woman? Cause I talked about it yesterday. Wonder Woman. And Wednesday already killed the squeaker in it. Ooh, kind of. You want Wonder Woman? Or do you want the brains? See, this is why I need a basket to keep all of her stuff. Pretty soon there'll be 50 toys all over the war room. Um, I don't think she likes that. What, laying on her back and me squishing her belly? She loves it. She, I call it being the baby, and she literally will come over and plop backwards. If you pick her up, she will immediately... Oh, oh, look, 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 look. Are you, what are you doing? Are you trying to pull a toy out of there? Are you trying to decide what you want to play with? You have so many options because everybody sent you so many toys. You're the most spoiled dog on the planet. Do you, do you want to get in there? Now I want to know what she picks. Mike says I broke down. I'm in comfy clothes on the couch with the AC on. I'm a midget brain, can't help it. Can't wait for my shirt. Elsa sent Wonder Woman. Okay, I'm sorry. What are, what are you doing? Do you want the carrot? Is that what you want? Is that the one you wanted? No, nope, obviously not. It's like a psychology experiment to see what she wants to play with. She looks like Stop waiting me. Oh my God. She's your, yeah. See, that's what she cries like that. What do you want? Do you want this? Is that what you want? You want the crinkly? Or do you want your favorite? No? What do you want? You want a ball? Is that what you want? I can't read her mind. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, Mike and Becky said we're holding out to put the ACs in too. Yeah. Now she's putting stuff back in the basket. Oh my God, she's going in. I can't even deal with my dog right now. Can't even deal. If she curls up and takes a nap in there, I'm never going to stop laughing. I'm just warning you right now. What are you doing? Wednesday? What are you doing?
That's the one you want? This is the one? I'm really sorry if this is boring, but I am totally transfixed on what my dog is doing right now. I can't even handle this. I am so happy that I'm getting it on video and I have witnesses because no one would believe me. What are you doing? Do you want the carrot? No, she's smelling my Moscow mule. That you cannot have Wednesday. You never touch mama's booze. Can I just thank somebody really quick? So when WAF went off the air and we all got laid off, um, Erin O'Malley, that does middays at Mix, came up and gave me a bottle of vodka and a wonderful hug. And she is just the sweetest human being on the planet. And uh, I cracked open Erin O'Malley's bottle of vodka tonight. So Erin, I love you. Thank you for the bottle. I appreciate it as I drip it all over the couch here in the war room. Yeah, that was it. She just wanted to chew on that bone. That's the one she wanted. Okay. Um, so if you missed it earlier because you were watching the drop kicks, um, up on my Twitter feed are links to um, me and Afghanistan with a bunch of our troops from the Massachusetts Army National Guard introducing the Dropkick Murphys um, live from Afghanistan in September of 2011. So if you haven't seen those videos yet, they're up on my Twitter feed and up on Facebook as well, and they are very cool. Um, they have extended the stay-at-home order in New Hampshire until mid-June. Right before I got into the war room, it was announced that the White House was on lockdown because there were protesters nearby. Um, now, the Minneapolis police officer, uh, Officer Chauvin, was charged today, I believe, with third-degree murder and was arrested. And um, they are saying that they are also going to be seeking charges against the other three officers uh, that were there as well. And there is widespread civil unrest and rioting happening um, around the United States right now. Um, I bring it up, a lot of people ask me about this stuff because I am such a vocal and outspoken supporter of law enforcement. Um, and this is all I'll say about it. Um, I hate it when anyone in a position of authority takes advantage of that authority and misuses the public's trust. It's also been my experience that um, the, the overwhelming majority of law enforcement uh, is not like that. And I am honored to call so many of them um, my friends. So many people, especially in Massachusetts, um, are veterans that have already served overseas and now come back and um, end up working in civil service in some way, whether it be law enforcement, paramedic, EMT, corrections, the sheriff's department, firefighters. Um, my uncle was a police officer and a detective for years. Um, my brother-in-law is. There's just, there's so many people in my life that wear uniforms to go to work every day. And it breaks my heart for them to see someone take advantage of their authority and their job and misuse it because there are far too many um, examples. Actually, Will Smith said th something incredibly poignant. He said racism isn't um, more common, it's just being filmed and videotaped now. I know I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he said, but um, you know, there are so many good people that are just trying to protect and serve, as they say. And to those people, to the good guys, um, thank you for what you do. And for the bad guys, um, which like I said, there's not that many, but the ones that are there, you don't deserve to the public's trust. You don't deserve to do what you do. And unfortunately, there are examples of um, every type of profession that take advantage of their position. And unfortunately, I think there have been um, disparities in the protecting and the serving um, for a long time and that needs to change but I hate to hear people make blanket statements about law enforcement because I just know so many of them that are really doing it for the right reasons because they really do want to help and I know how hard it is for them to try and to convince people that they're one of the good guys but we have a lot of good guys and women obviously that are um, not only with us in the war room every night, but that are out there trying to protect us and that show up, 
you know, in your worst moment, when you call 911 and you need help, they show up. And so I just want justice to be done. And I also want the bad cops to get weeded out because they're tarnishing um, a profession that should be revered um, for being brave and selfless and not vilified. And there are way too many good guys and the assholes are assholes. And, uh, you know, I just, I've taken a lot of flack over the years for supporting law enforcement. I've taken a lot of crap over the years for criticizing the ones, the, the bad apples, um, because I, I'm not someone that makes blanket statements about a group of people because, um, there are just no blanket statements to be made in this world. Everyone is different and you're going to find examples of really bad people no matter where you go. Um, you know, I remember the conversations when I was overseas about people would say, you know, oh, you know, just drop a nuke over there and turn Iraq into glass. And then I went to Iraq and met all of these amazing people and was like, how can you say that about these good people? Um, but there are assholes out there everywhere and they need to just be rooted out. And if they are cops, then they need to not be cops anymore. But at the same time, we need to not treat the good ones like the bad ones because um, they don't deserve that either. And, um, you know, we're going to get more and more facts all the time. And obviously, you know, as trials go through and autopsy reports and background checks and, um, you know, all of the um, employment records and the personnel files of the officers that were involved come out, we'll find out exactly how bad they were or how bad they weren't. Um, but you guys all know how much I love this country and to see it being torn apart live on the news is heartbreaking for me um, because we are supposed to be a place where everyone is welcome. We're supposed to be a melting pot. We're supposed to be a place where everyone, no matter what they are, how they look, what sex or gender, their religious beliefs, we're, we're all supposed to feel at home here. Like, like we all feel in the war room, like we are supposed to be accepted here just because we, you know, we all get along with whatever that common fiber is, whether it be rock music or just whatever we have in common is enough to just bring everyone here every night. And we've created a community here. And on a grander scale, that's what the United States is supposed to be. And I have met so many people that have served this country bravely, um, gay, straight, male, female, black, white, and they have all worn the same flag on their uniform. And it breaks my heart to see a country that I love so much, a country that so many have fought and bled and died for. Um, be ripped apart from the inside. We have enough enemies outside the walls of the United States, outside the borders, off the coast, that we're supposed to, um, we're supposed to all be Americans here and we're supposed to all believe in justice and truth and the freedoms that this country was founded on. And I just, you know, I just wish that, that there was more of that. And, um, so I felt like I had to say something because I feel really stupid while literally the news, you know, it's the biggest story in the world right now is what's going on in the United States. And, you know, to just be in the war room talking about my dog's toys just seems shallow and misguided. But I also understand that we all meet up in the war room every night because the world has been such a hard place to be the last three months and that we come here to laugh and to console each other and to, um, you know, remind each other that there is good there and, and to be able to, um, you know, be there for your fellow man and your fellow rock fan and your fellow war room friend, um, you know, where strangers have become friends now just through this. She's chewing a bone. Um, so I just, I just want everybody to just take a deep breath and realize that there is a lot of good out there and there are a lot of good people out there and the bad people need to just 
fuck off because we got shit to do. We got important shit to do. We have an economy we need to put back together. We've got kids we've got to get back in school. We've got, you know, a vaccine to find. We've got sick people that need to be made better. We've got healthcare workers that need a fucking day off. We have a lot to do. And so I just would just ask you guys to, um, you know, dip into that kindness and empathy that we've needed so much of the last few months and just find a little bit more kindness and a little bit more understanding and a little bit more empathy because everybody could use it right now because it's really hard. Um, Mike and Becky said it best. I love this group. Nobody judges here. No, there's, this isn't a place where we're going to debate politics. This is a place where we are going to acknowledge that we have more alike than we have different. And this is a place where we bring solutions, not problems. And where we celebrate people's differences, not vilify them for it. Um, that's what this place is. And anybody that doesn't like that, well, feel free to find your own fucking war room because this one's mine. But we've all been doing that for 77 nights in a row that we've been here to comfort each other. And most of us have never met. Um, but we're still here giving each other words of encouragement and... Um, people have found solace on difficult days, difficult anniversaries when they've lost loved ones or had um, family members that were sick that they couldn't visit or that were laid off and are having financial struggles and stresses or that have had difficulty trying to teach their kids because they haven't been able to go to school. Things have been really hard the last few months and they're getting harder. And we just need to remember that it's not always going to be bad and that it is going to get better, but we have to acknowledge in some cases um, that things, that bad people do bad things. And um, sometimes the bad people wear uniforms and sometimes they don't. And, um, you know, we need to just. I don't know. I just, I was having a really hard time kind of watching the news today and watching things get burned and people get tear gassed and riots. And it's just, it's really difficult because, you know, there's a pandemic still going on and people are still sick and dying. Speaking of that, um, the Rutland police department lost an officer today. Officer Songy, um, lost his battle with the coronavirus today. And I mean, it's, it's crazy. So you know, you guys, I know that I'm have, trying to have a serious conversation and the fucking Wednesday's got squeaker toys back there and I apologize. Um, I just, I just really wanted you guys to know that um, I'm not ignoring what is going on in the world right now and I don't want anybody that knows that I have such support for law enforcement to think that I'm ignoring the difficulties that are happening right now and the disparities that are happening right now because there are disparities and there have been disparities and um, sometimes the criticism of law enforcement isn't warranted and sometimes it is. And um, we just, we need to treat every, every officer with the respect that they deserve and the ones that don't deserve any respect, well, then they need to have their badge taken away from them. Um, so that's kind of how I feel. I just didn't want anybody to think that I wasn't um, willing to make a statement about it, but I'm not picking sides here. I'm just, it just, um, it's just hard, you know? I have so many friends that are proud officers and they are all devastated because they're like, fuck that guy, you know? So many of my friends that are law enforcement officers have put up posts saying, that is an embarrassment to our profession. That is not who we are. That is not what we're trained to do. That is not a reflection of how we are as a profession or a community. And it, it, now you're making us all, you know, look like that. And that is not who we are. And, um, you know, the, the same can be said, you know, for any, for any group of people, you know. Um, you can't call a group of people thugs because of what they look like. You can't call a woman a whore because she's wearing a mini skirt. Um, you know, you, you can't make statements like that, that you can't judge somebody like that. 
And that's why I love you guys, because you guys come here and there isn't any judgment, you know? And, um, and it's awesome. And you guys are amazing. And we need more people like that to take a fucking step back and to be rational and have a rational conversation and not be partisan and not just toe some fucking line one way or the other. They're all this or they're all that. It, that's not how we are as a country. There are way too many people that have sacrificed everything to make this country a place where we can all be accepted and just live our lives. That's what it's supposed, that's what that flag is supposed to mean. And anybody that takes that message away from that flag is unpatriotic and un-American because it's supposed to mean that. That's what it stands for. Right, Wednesday? Thank you for continuing to squeak the giant blue dog while I'm trying to have a serious conversation. I apologize to anyone that tuned in late and is wondering why I'm talking about serious life stuff while there's a squeaking toy in the background. But I have a dog that wants to play with the giant blue dog. She pulled it out of the friggin' basket. That's what she wants to play with. Um, would you guys like to celebrate a birthday? Because I think it would be nice to celebrate a birthday. So cheers to whoever is celebrating a birthday today. Um, if you are having a birthday, you share, you share it with Mike Procaro from Toto, Latoya Jackson, Noel Gallagher, and Scary Spice Mel Brown. Those are the musical birthdays today. So cheers. I don't know how old Latoya is, but I'm pretty sure her face is only a few years old. Um, go ahead, Wednesday. Now all of a sudden she's all wound up and wants to play. Thank you very much for the toy basket because it helps immensely to keep her clutter organized. She is just loving. Can you hear her right now? The blue dog? Can't hear it. What? What are you doing? Go get it. So it's Friday night. Remember when we used to be able to go out and do stuff on Friday nights? Like, remember when we were allowed to, like, leave the house and go out and have fun and meet up with friends at bars and go to concerts and walk down the street and, like, high-five strangers? I saw a meme the other day that was like, remember when you used to celebrate a birthday by everyone blowing on a cake and everyone else ate it? Yeah. Remember those days? Yeah. So do I. We're not gonna see those days for a while, right? Um, I miss those days. I miss those Friday nights where it was like, hey, what do you wanna do tonight? I don't know, let's just go out and find something to do. And it's like, now it's like, wait, what night is it? Wait, it's Friday? Oh, let me change my sweatpants, right? Because that's all we can do. It was so nice to see Stiz today. Sorry, I'm touching my face. It was so nice to see Stiz today, but it was so weird at the same time because it was like, there hasn't been like someone in the house in so long. And I was like, okay, Stiz, like, come over. It'd be nice to have a little company. We took a picture close. I know we weren't wearing masks, but we social distanced for pretty much the whole time he was here. And it was just really nice to see him. Like, you know, I tell you, like, I miss my AAF family so much. And when I get to see him, it's like that family member you've been you know, away from for so long. And then you get to see him and you're like, oh, like I can't wait for you guys to see Shu on Tuesday. I can't wait for us to be able to hang out. Uh, before I get out of here tonight, uh, have you guys, speaking of what is fucking wrong with the world, have you guys started watching Filthy Rich, the Jeffrey Epstein docu-series that's on Netflix? I started watching it. Holy fuck balls, Batman. I knew he was a shit bag, but what is this like the third or I think I'm on the third or fourth episode. I can't remember. I am so infuriated by this friggin' docuseries and what this prick fucker got away with. It's unbelievable. Like it, it's shocking to me. Shocking to me that this guy got away with, and, and there's a case where 
the police chief of Palm Beach is this amazing, empathetic man that has done everything that his profession would require to protect the girls. And then there are other people that worked either in the government or, you know, in law enforcement that have just completely sidestepped their responsibility and allowed the victim, like the victim count to just raise. Like it is shocking. This docu-series, I knew it was gonna be bad. Obviously we've all heard about Jeffrey Epstein or whatever, but it is shocking at the amount of evidence that was either overlooked or, you know, I can't speak to what the world would be like to an African American. I, I, I don't know what that's like. I just can try to have as much empathy as humanly possible. But I can look at this docu-series from the perspective of a woman, a loud, opinionated, unapologetic woman who has had issues with people in the past. Just because I was a woman, I worked in rock for how many years? Of course, I was gonna bump into some assholes. But when there are accusations of sexual assault or any of these things and, and people criticize, you know, why don't you say something sooner? Or, you know, you maybe you didn't fight back hard enough. Or, you know, I mean, a judge just got kicked off the bench because he told a woman that if she didn't want to get raped, she should close her legs. And watching that these women did make complaints, that they did file criminal complaints against, like, it, if you have a daughter that is between the ages of 12 and 18 years old and you watch this, you will be like, oh, fuck, no. And I watched it going, I know Epstein didn't kill himself, you know, but I really don't care that he's dead. Like, I, re I don't really care how he died or not. Like, it, does, it just doesn't. And the fact that some of the other people that were in on this whole thing aren't at the very least behind bars, and I'm going to be really careful because I have to make sure that I'm not advocating for violence or slandering or libeling people. I'm just saying that if you were fucking in on this shit because there were people that were in on it that are protected by plea agreements, you should be cast out on an island because you shouldn't be allowed to be here. And there is a failure from top to bottom on, on what happened to these girls. And they never pick on you know, the girls that have everything, you know, that come from like great families. They, they, abusers always pick on vulnerable people because it, they're better victims because people don't believe them as much, which has been a problem with women and rape and abuse is that they always bring up how promiscuous they were, or all of those things. But these girls were like 14 years old and they dubbed these girls like prostitutes. And it's like, no, if you're 14, you can't consent whether someone gives you money or like you're 14. I'm telling you, even if the Clintons did know everything, there's a whole bunch of other people that knew everything too. And this is not a partisan thing. There's an awful lot of pictures of the president with that fuck bag too. Like this goes all the way up. It goes to the Royal family. It goes to the president. It goes to the former president leaders of, industry, business leaders, it goes all the way. I am in the middle of this series right now and I'm just like this, like watching it. Last night I watched an episode before I went to bed and then I was so furious that I couldn't sleep because I couldn't believe this was happening. And not that long ago, 2006, 2007. <sighs> you gotta watch it. Like it's one thing to watch fucking Tiger King because all those guys are just fucking assholes and none of them should own tigers anyway because tigers don't belong in Texas. I've said that before. But this is people's kids. These are women whose lives have been devastated. And there are still people out there that were involved in this on both sides of the aisle, not a partisan thing, that haven't seen justice yet and that shit needs to go too.
Just injustice in any way, shape, or form is not okay. Um, it's very troublesome and just fucking... It, it's hard for me to even talk about it because it's so aggravating, but it is infuriating, and I'm just warning you that if you have daughters, you're... Because even all of the law enforcement was saying, like, you know, there was a maintenance guy that worked for Epstein on his on Rape Island and he quit because he was like I have daughters that age like it's just it's insane um so you guys should check it out and watch it like not if you're in a good mood but like if you're if you if you're in that mindset where you're like okay I want to watch something and kind of know what the hell was going on like and uh, what's the author's name? Patterson? What's his first name? I can't, why can't I remember his first name? He produced it. And he was a neighbor in Palm Beach. I mean, what's the name of the series? It's called Filthy Rich, the Jeffrey Epstein story or docu-series or something, but it's called Filthy Rich. You'll see it right in the top section on Netflix. Um, it's just crazy. You guys have to watch it. And, and if you watch it, let me know what you think because uh, what is the docuseries? It's called Filthy Wretch. It's on um, Netflix about Jeffrey Epstein. It's it, James Patterson. Thank you very much, Brianna. Uh, James Patterson produced it and he actually does some of the interviews um, and is part of the docuseries because he lived down in Palm Beach and was a neighbor. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Krista. James Patterson. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, but you are forgetting to mention that the girls were bringing over their friends. One girl brought... No, 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 I'm not forgetting. These girls admit that they were part of an abuse pyramid scheme where they were bringing over other girls. But if you're a 14-year-old girl or a 15-year-old girl that has already been raped by this person and you are a runaway, you are not in a position to, like... I have empathy for those girls that they brought over other girls because... They were in a difficult position and I mean, it's just, it's, it's gut wrenching to think that these people, these girls were in that position and you know, then you have to watch something really good. Like if you're going to watch that, then you have to watch something that reminds you that the world is a good place. Like, have you guys done that? Where like, you know, I, I watch something awful on the news or whatever. And then I go and watch like Dodo videos on Facebook about people rescuing animals and getting them adopted. Like I need, I, I need um, something that kind of assures me that not all humans are fucking awful. And yeah, brainwashed and traumatized, exactly. Um, his wife is uber creepy, Will says. Yeah, and she's not in jail. And there were rumors that she was hiding in Massachusetts, which, that was a while ago. That was like when he got arrested and stuff. But I don't know if they were ever married. But it was definitely his girlfriend. And um, she sucks out loud. Like seriously. Just the whole thing. You just have to watch it. Like it just amazes me. Like it's one thing to watch things that happened in the past. And for you to go, oh, well that was back then. The world is better now. And then to watch something that was literally happening like 10 years ago. And you're like, wait a minute, hold on a second. That's not, we're not watching black and white war footage from World War II here. Like this was fucking a decade ago. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, Maria, see, you understand. You love the Dodo stories. Um, yeah, you. it's like the people that rescue those animals, like under the bridges and in trash heaps and like they fix them and love them. Like those people are amazing and it makes me feel so good that like okay there are some people in this world that are good and and there are a lot of them that are fighting injustice and that they are standing up for you know the people that don't have a voice and they are fighting for equality and we need to just be more supportive of those people and to give less attention to the fucking assholes so there you go let me know if you guys watch that over the weekend and let me know what you thought um, Wednesday's now licking my feet because I think she needs to go outside. So before she shits on the rug, 
I'm going to get out my soapbox and let you guys enjoy the rest of your Friday night. So cheers to the Dropkick Murphys for a kick-ass concert at Fenway. Uh, please keep sending me the pictures of you guys in your t-shirts. I just love seeing you guys loving the shirts. It makes me so happy. And obviously every shirt that um, gets purchased, all the profits are going to help our veterans that need food assistance through this crisis. And um, so once again, another plug for the Massachusetts Military Support Foundation. If you know someone, a veteran that is in need of food assistance, they can log on to massmilitarysupportfoundation.org. They have food distribution sites all over the state, Agawam, Baldwinville, Barnstable, Bridgewater, Brighton, Danvers, Devons, Fall River, Foxborough, Framingham, Haverhill, Methuen, North Adams, Randolph, Raynham, Sandwich, and Westport. And that is just in Massachusetts. And there are a lot of food distribution sites around the Northeast. So when things get you guys down, if you watch the news and, um, you know, it just, you get bummed out, uh, look at the t-shirt that you bought and know that you guys are helping to um, feed a veteran and their family um, in a time of great need and crisis right now. And you guys did something good and you need to be proud of that because you guys are amazing. So have a good night. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.